countdown has begun. To the second annual Paranormal Restore. It was so successful the first time they knew they had to do it again. Hosted by Bruce Baraclow Jr. and St. Albans Sanatorium. With special guest speakers, Eric Knapp, Pat Bizard O'Keefe, the Connor Sisters, Lyle and Tana Lotz from Twisted, and Chris Bellazon. Just to mention a few of the special guests. This event is going to be held on May 21st, 2016 for the price of $50 per ticket with the proceeds going back to restore St. Albans Sanatorium. Not only do you get lectures, but you also get investigations. Leave your mark on St. Albans just as it leaves its mark on numerous people that come through its doors. Order your tickets online at www.stalbans-virginia.com. <laughs> Welcome to Within the Chaos with your host, Rodney Shortridge, and co host, Robin Dalton. Good evening, my chaos maniacs. And thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, you can listen in by calling in 516 387 1922. Or you can go to the Vibe Radio Network website at blogtalkradio.com forward slash radio uh, Vibe Network. Sorry, I got that all wrong. Oh, I messed it up. That's all right. Got that on my mind. From deep in the heart of Appalachian Mountains, I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you all for listening to Within the Chaos. My name is Rodney Shortridge, and I'll be your host tonight, along with my little Rick Corvette, Robin Dalton. Hi, y'all. Tonight, our special guest is Shannon Stockton. She is an independent film actress and freelance model. I want to let everyone know that Robin and I, along with the Vibe Radio Network, will be at the Paranormal Restore on May 21st from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m., located at St. Albans Sanatorium. 6248 University Park Drive, Bradford, Virginia. The cost is $50 per ticket, and for vendor tables, $25 a space. You don't want to miss out on this amazing event. Not only do you get to hang out with your favorite radio host, but you get to check out some amazing speakers within the paranormal field. Followed up with a paranormal investigation from 8 p.m. until 1 a.m. Enjoy a full day of lectures conducted by experts in the paranormal field and enjoy them for an investigation of the sanatorium. Listed as one of the most haunted locations in the U.S. All event proceeds go to building maintenance and restoration. I also want to mention that Black Diamond Paranormal Society will be at the Tazewell Comic Con on Saturday, June 4th, starting at 10 a.m. to 4 p.m located at the Tazewell County Library. And also, Black Diamond Paranormal Society, along with Within the Chaos, will be at the Penhurst Paracon 2 on Saturday, June 4th, and Sunday, June 5th, starting at 10 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., located at the Penhurst Asylum, Spring City, Pennsylvania. Black Diamond Paranormal Society will be at the Garden Day uh, event on Saturday, June 18th, starting at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., located by the Old Garden High School and the new uh, pharmacy at Oakwood, Virginia. Uh, BDPS and Within the Chaos will be at the Exchange Hotel, Paracon 3, Saturday, June 18th, starting at 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., located at Gordonsville, Virginia. Oh, God, I think I got all the announcements. Holy shit. (laughs) Hey, Robin, how you doing? How's your week? Well, I was feeling pretty good until two things. I just noticed how freaking busy we're going to be, which actually is really freaking awesome. And until I just, like, really cut my toenail really short. Now it hurts, and I'm going to cry. <laughs> you cut it too quick? <laughs> yes. This bug, my kids have just me. Rub just rub some dirt on it. Walk it off. You'll be all right. My kids had me uh, paying attention to them when I was trying to do that, and I hurt myself. 
You can kiss it. You can kiss my toes. <laughs> I don't kiss no feet. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That just, just depends on how gnarled up it is. <laughs> but other than but I that, can, I'm great. That's good. Better than I am. Hell, I got up Monday morning, got up out of the bed. Couldn't even stand the hell up. Hurt my back, and I don't know how. I don't know if I got a cramp in my sleep or what. And I'm still sore. I still. You all that damn wild partying you've been doing. I know. God dang. You need to calm it down. We're getting I'm too old for all that all night shit. Hey, I got to show these youngins that these uh, old fat motherfucker like me can still kick it. Uh, mm, girl. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, well, my heart tells me, you know, you can do that, but then my body and my mind is like, try it, fat girl, and see what happens. <laughs> it's like, hey, <laughs> you, your mind's saying it, but your feet are like, uh, yeah, no, that ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those yeah, days, just... I'll be hanging around the kids, and I'll be like, I can do this, you know, I'm, you know, I'm still young. I feel like I'm 18, 20, and then I'm like, about 20 minutes later, I'm like, nah, forget it. I'm almost 40. <laughs> That's like me. I get in the back of the truck, and I used I used to just jump in and jump out of the back of the bed of the truck. Oh, hell. I know a few months ago, I was I was in the back of the truck, and I, was, I, I had that thought for a second. I could jump that son of a bitch like I used to. And, and then something kicked in. I guess my feet said, oh, hell no. This humble bumble ain't bouncing. No, ho, ho. <laughs> So I wasn't able, it, it just didn't happen. So I climbed down like an old man. <laughs> well, at least you didn't have to get the ladder out. Uh, yeah, that's true. I see where they got <laughs> trucks now that they got steps for us old people. So I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Chevy. <laughs> well, I, I believe we better get, get Shannon on here before she's like, Jesus, fuck, are they ever going to talk to me? <laughs> so, <laughs> Probably. Without, <laughs> without you. <laughs> Without any further ado, it is my honor to welcome our special guest, Shannon Stockton. Not only is she hot, but she's pretty. Hey, she's y'all. Sexy. She's wild. <laughs> oh, she's trying to talk over me, damn it. I ain't just introducing you. Jesus, I, you didn't even let me get to the new. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. It's all about you. I was just saying, hey, keep going. <laughs> I've already lost it. I've already lost a moment. Oh, well, goodness. <coughs> excuse me. Damn cigarettes. Uh, <laughs> so, Shannon, tell everybody a little about yourself and how you got into acting, if you don't care. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Um, I don't know, actually. It just kind of happened. <laughs> no, just, um, so you're just I'm walking think, and fell into it? Do what? So you just walk in and trip and fell into it? It just fell in my lap. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I am I'm Shannon Stockton. No stop ton, Rodney. Get it right. I'm sorry, that's a that's a Virginia talk. I'm so I'm hillbilly. It's, it's Stockton. Stockton. Like like Christmas okay. stocking, but country like stocking. Yeah, no you wear stocking. That's right. I'm, well, I like stalking because it makes it sound like you're stalking me. Oh, good Lord. I might be. You never know. Girl, what? <laughs> I feel so privileged. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, I am Shannon Stalking, um, a.k.a. Michelle Macabre, which is my little... Cosplay horror name or whatever you want. Horror, not horror, Rodney. Um. <laughs> See, when people get on the radio with me, hell, they can't even talk. Shit, so I don't feel so bad. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I always, uh, my dad was a special effects artist, and I grew up watching him do all this neat, cool stuff and got into that and doing, uh, making my own costumes and special effects makeup and Went to uh, some conventions and showed them what I was made of with my hand sewn, handmade costumes and shit. And uh, you know, it just kind of blossomed from there. I just started, you know, trying my hand at the acting thing and got a 
few movies and music videos under my belt, so it's full steam ahead from here on out. So that's pretty much it. Well, yeah. Well, so. Well, I, I've I've seen some of your costumes. You don't use much material, do you? Um. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you just pick up a napkin and go. You know, I can make a costume out of this, and I'm I, like, yay! I probably could, actually. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's talent. So, how long have you been acting? Um, a couple of years. It's not been too long, so I'm still at the bottom of the totem pole. So, anytime I get, um, you know, the uh, ability to be able to be in a movie or video or whatever comes my way, I'm gladly acceptable of it you know because i am still way down here you know but it's okay i'm i'm building an empire here i'm working my way up <laughs> so. oh honey we've been there for quite a few years <laughs> and i still ain't got to the empire yet but i'm huge <laughs> i'm huge well you never have to you don't quit that's the that's the goal here i'm already older so i'm almost like morgan freeman like i'm getting my start and later in life here so there's never you don't you don't quit you know so we're not getting older we're getting better okay that is right that's (laughs) correct that's the most valid statement ever (laughs) so uh so what was your first film you uh you did (laughs) i have to say (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I, yes, you do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why do you have peak curiosity? <laughs> now, I I will say it, the first one I did was called Peyton's Burden, um, and I play a racist redneck bitch in this movie. Um, it, it, and it was fun. I mean, there was some times where. I had a little falling out with the director who I'm not going to go into that, but uh, anyway, there was times where I literally was not acting like the hatred I felt was completely honest. Um, <laughs> so that helped my character a lot. <laughs> so. You are from Tennessee, right? <laughs> the people of Tennessee don't get mad at me. I don't want no hate mail. That was a joke. <laughs> I'm actually from South Carolina, but I've been living in uh, Tennessee for about eight or nine years. So I've it been here a little while. still doesn't matter for people in South Carolina. Same goes for you, too. No hate is just a joke. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's right. So, but, yeah, that was the first one. So, come oh, on. Was it what you were expecting? Were you nervous? When you went on your first film? Actually, no. Um, when I was in high school, I did a lot of drama and theater. So, you know, being, which I know is totally different than being in front of a camera. But um, I don't, a lot of people, you know, they when they're acting, I guess they try to um, really get into it and this and that. And, you know, they have to go, like, if you have a crying thing, they have to go off and do their thing. And I just, I just go with the flow. I do it, you know, it just comes naturally, I guess. I don't know. I don't really get nervous or anything like that. I just show up, do what I need to do. And that's about it. You know, I mean, it's fun for me. It's not, I'm not one of those, you know, Hollywood type, you know, this is going to be my life. I need to make $10 million. That's that's not acting for me. (laughs) So it'd be cool to have $10 million. Don't get me wrong, but, (laughs) (laughs) you know, some days I'm tired. Some days I'm tired of opening my my wallet and not having, you know, $10,000 and $10 million, you know, but whatever. (laughs) I'm I'm tired tired of the <laughs> yeah, so, you know, but it's, it's all fun. I mean, it's fun. It's something that I love doing, and I think it's just a, more of, like, an acting passion for me. So, um, you know, I just go at it. And I am going to mention there are boobs shown in Peyton's Burden, and uh, so if that 
gets anybody interested. There you go. <laughs> Where can I How buy the DVD? Feel? When it was it was over when you when that first film was done, how did you feel? I mean, was it just like relief or was it you know pride? I mean, yeah, like, Rob, wow, I just did my first film. <laughs> you, you, got, you, Rob, you you got to wait for that question. I asked one before you. Where uh, do you purchase the DVD? <laughs> well, I can say that you can uh, contact. <clears throat> Chase Dudley, he has um he's he was the director. He has copies. Um and it it's also streaming free on the INC network on Roku. Um so if you have a Roku you can watch it free there too. So I, I would like an autographed copy if that's possible. <laughs> well you you get a copy and I'll be glad to autograph it for you. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I there's a way I'll get it. Okay. Okay, okay, Robin. I'm sorry. You were saying. I was wondering how she felt when her first film wrapped up and she was done with it. It was. It was. I'm just gonna say it was a hard time on set. There were a lot of issues and and things like that. So it was working through those. And after it was done, um, it was a relief. And it was kind of cool to know that, you know, things did follow through. There's a lot of directors out there who, you know, they'll they'll try to sell you the world and they just don't come through with it. So that's one thing I can say for him um, as he did produce the movie. It did, you know, we have DVD copies and that was kind of cool, you know, to actually have that and um, go to a premiere and see the movie and work with some amazing people that, you know, were also on the film too. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was awesome. Even all the stress and other bullshit that happened throughout filming, you know, you kind of get past that, and, you know, you actually have a finished product. So that was kind of kind of cool to see. So it was awesome. Well, cool. when, when you found out about the part, uh, what made you decide to try out for it, or was it something to make hay to you with? They, he actually came to me um, for that. And uh, it was like, you know, okay, we're Facebook friends, and I saw that he was, you know, doing this movie and stuff, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, so I just messaged and talked a little bit back and forth, and it was kind of like, well, this role would be perfect for you. What do you think about this? You know, so I sent the script, read it, and um, it's like, yeah, you know, I'm on board with it, you know. But, um, yeah, pretty much lately – that's how it's been happening. And when I say things just kind of fall in my lap, I don't really go and ask for anything. They just kind of come mm-hmm. to me, which I know is kind of strange. But, I mean, at the same time, I'm blessed to have that happen, you know. So that's always a good thing. So yeah. mm-hmm. so what what other types of roles have you played in the past couple of years? I know you said I'm, you were like a racist bitch. <laughs> yep. And that was, in that particular movie was a drama, so uh, that's where that came in at. Um, I did a Harvester of Flesh, which is not completed yet, but um, it was a zombie movie, and uh, I played the heroine, that pretty much the heroine, um, that gets turned at the end. I'm not going to mention any more than that. <laughs> I don't want to give any spoilers away. Um and then I've done a couple of different music videos for um, Alice in Red. Um, this movie that's coming out, and hopefully it'll be done in June, uh, Leah Smock, The Legend Awakens. I actually got to show my um, skills, my makeup skills, and did all the uh, special effects makeup and made the costumes for that. Um, so I get to play a witch in that and for the video, the music video for that. So. Well, and, a <laughs> <laughs> and a paranormal investigator, which was kind of cool. I get to actually be myself as a paranormal investigator in this movie, too. So it's like a dual role for me, but uh, uh, totally cool with that. That was pretty awesome. So that should be out pretty soon this year. So looking forward to that, too. And well, then, I must say, I'm going to – my daughter um, – because I know you did your makeup as the witch. Yeah, uh, she's actually into uh, special effects makeup. She's teaching herself, and she's doing some 
you know, some great things. And I just, I love, I love special effects makeup. It's awesome. Oh. I can't do it, but to see other people do it, it amazes me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot. It's just, a lot of people don't understand sometimes, though. It's so time-consuming, like, especially if you're doing it on set, you know, and that happened to me a couple times with Eddie where, you know, I was in someone else's bathroom, like somebody's house I'd never been in before trying to apply all this stuff and to myself, you know, and people are knocking on the door and you'd use the bathroom. I'm like, oh shit, you know, <laughs> you got my stuff laid out everywhere. And, you know, so, it, you know, it does take a little bit of time. A lot of people probably don't realize how long it takes, but, um, you know, in the end, it's really worth it, the finished product and stuff. So, I love doing it. It's awesome. So, so I got, have you uh, been trained to be an actress? Uh, did you go to school for it or anything like that? I didn't go to school. Like I said, you know, just um, growing up in high school and doing a lot of drama and plays and theater and stuff like that. Um, I also was a classically trained ballerina. So I've always been on stage. You know, the stage doesn't bother me. And it's kind of the same thing being in a setting, you know, with filming. You know, I'm I'm used to being in front of a lot of people and performing. So, to me, acting is really no different. You know, I mean, so I guess I just kind of, like I said, kind of go with the flow. So. <laughs> well, well, have you done any TV? I know you've done film, uh, but have you done any TV work? No, I haven't, but I would be totally interested in doing that. If, it, you know, something pops up or comes my way, I think that would be pretty awesome, actually. So, cool. not yet, but maybe one day. <laughs> so. <laughs> It'll happen, girl. You just got to keep on chugging, chugging, That's chugging. Right. That's right. I'm, I'm working on it. Building that empire. <laughs> so what Build do you read? your certain point to an empire, well, not quite an empire, but when you get, if you was to get a chance, who is one of, who are some of the A-listers that you would really want to work with? Do you have any favorites? Oh, my goodness. I see, my favorite genre is horror. So, any, any, I mean, oh, my goodness. <laughs> See, like, I would love to work maybe with Kane Hodder or Derek Mears or, you know, even John Dugan or Lawrence Harvey, any of those. I mean, I would love to just, you know, do something with those guys. I mean, just because that's my favorite genre of film is horror. So anything like that. I mean, you know. I know, and I consider them A-listers because they've been there, they've done that, they've done all kinds of awesome films, and to me, you know, that those guys are better in my eyes than, let's say, uh, Brad Pitt or, you know, Angelina, you know, any of those guys, you know, I, I you yeah. know, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now, Tim, and this is what I want to know. <laughs> oh, shit. Have you ever... <laughs> Have you ever kindled any off-film romances with any of your co-stars? And what if you did? Was it awkward? Actually, no. I mean, the first the first movie that I did, the Peyton Burton movie, I was actually in a relationship, and we were both uh, cast in that movie, and uh, we did have a mock sex scene. But you know, it wasn't awkward because we were already together. You know, uh-huh. and. That's- that's why we decided to do it, but um, I, you know, I haven't. I kind of shy away from doing any type of sex scenes with any kind of, you know, co-stars or whatever. I, that's just not my thing. <laughs> I try not to do those. Um, and the only reason I did the other one was because I was already in a relationship with that person. But um, I generally don't know, no, and I haven't kindled anything as of lately. <laughs> So that doesn't mean that I'm not up for kindling anything. It's just, you know, it's not happening right now, apparently. So I'm just kind of. I got a lot 
<laughs> do you stay in contact with any of your co-stars on a personal level? Um, I just basically through Facebook, you know, because I living here, I have to travel a lot, so nobody's really close. Like, you know, where I can go and say, let's go have lunch or whatever. You know, everybody's so far away. Um, yeah. So I don't really get the chance other than just, you know, through Facebook or, you know, texting and things like that. So it kind of sucks sometimes, you know, being away from people that you met that were pretty awesome, you know. So, no. Huh. Well, I, I know you've done some modeling. I mean, I, you know, glance. Yeah. Uh, some of your photos. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, what, do you prefer modeling or acting? Oh God, are you serious? Like, <laughs> it's, it's, I don't, I don't prefer. I like both. Like, I can't, I can't tell you which one I prefer more than the other because I really enjoy doing both. You know, and they're both performing for the camera. You know, and that's my thing. I love to do that, and that's just, I can't choose. Sorry, <laughs> I can't do it. That's all right. I, 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 that's fine. Yeah. I had to ask a toughie. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. I, I, now this one, you kind of you kind of glanced on this earlier, but uh, I know you've done. You said you've uh, done a sex scene and topless in uh, uh, your film, but have you mm-hmm. ever done any nude uh, uh, modeling? And would you consider it? Um, I have not unless you unless you're doing uh if you unless you're talking about the change of wardrobe in between and still the camera kind of just standing there <laughs> no, I'm just kidding no I haven't um but you know I might I don't ever do just because of you know I have kids and things like that and I try to uh keep things under wraps per se I don't mind doing topless but that's about as far as I'll go um just because you know I I my kids are at that age where I don't want them to you can google everything and I don't want that coming back on me to bite me in the ass <laughs> you know so oh, <laughs> Well, I mean, there's, I mean, there's some photographers out there. I mean, just really classy uh, right. nudes, and then there's some that does the not so classy. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I can understand that. I mean, I, I see where you're coming from. Well, uh, I also, well, I'd rather, you know, for me, like I think, you know, there's always. It's better, in in my opinion, maybe I'm old-fashioned, I don't know. But to me, like, you can always imply it, but you don't necessarily have to show everything you have to be sexy. And exactly. that's, that's what I generally go for, you know. I mean, to me, that's something intimate. If I'm with someone, then, yeah, of course I'm going to show you everything I got. But, you know, it's not for the world to see. And that's just, you know, that's how I feel about it, you know, so... I don't know. So what, That's just me. <laughs> so what would you say is your uh, uh, what type of modeling would you that you prefer doing? Just the sexy, or or anything like uh, magazines or clothing line or anything like that? Um, anything anything goes with the modeling. I've done all sorts of different shoots. Um, I've done, I've never done like print modeling for magazines or anything like that. I, I mean, I've been in a magazine before, but as a cosplay artist, um, that I had a spread for damage magazine that, you know, showed that. So it's, it, you know, whatever, you know, I had cosplay stuff shown in magazines. I've done, you know, video music shoots. I've done website promotion with different types of horror, um, photos of you know anything you know as far as that goes I don't have a preference I just kind of get out there and say hey do we want to shoot you you know half naked with blood all over your face okay you know or we want to shoot you sitting on top of this motorcycle okay you know just whatever you know as long as it's tasteful I don't mind any kind of photography except for a full full nude <laughs> so. so you ain't got into the hustler thing yet 
right. <laughs> no. no, no, no. So have you always been your body to do, you know, risque modeling and some of the modeling you do? Because you, in your photographs, you just look so, so comfortable. You know, I mean, it, it, you don't, I don't feel like, you know, you feel awkward at all. Have you always been like that? Um, I don't have. I mean, there's some, you know, there's some things that, you know, I'll do it. And then I always like to look and see, like, let me see what that looks like, you know, and I'm my wor- my own worst critic. Oh, my God, it's terrible. You know, so a lot of times if I don't like it, I'll go back and, and redo it, you know. But other than that, just being comfortable, um, I've always been pretty comfortable with that, you know. That just, like I said, just certain things I don't show. But other than that, I <laughs> don't have any issues, <laughs> really. It's just. Second nature, I guess. I don't know. But, well, how you supportive is your family? How the hell did this conversation go here? Do what? I said, she is sitting there thinking, Rodney, damn you. How did you get this conversation going this way? <laughs> no, I'm not. She's going to kick no, my ass I'm, No, I'm good. <laughs> so how supportive is your family with your acting and modeling career? Are they supportive of with you know for you they did support system they are every um my parents my you know my grandparents my kids even um everybody's really been very supportive they've always known that you know I because I you know in that early because a lot of people don't know this but I'm 41 you know so I'm getting up there and I've had my time in the sun where I did the whole retail thing and you know so it's time to break away from that and people realize you know my family included that this is something that she's always wanted to do and she's finally getting the chance to do it um so they fully back me and support me in everything that I do um I've never had, you know, an issue. Even my kids are just like, wow, you know, my, I have a daughter. And she's always, you know, wanting to see some of the photos and stuff that I do. And she helps with some of the special effects makeup. She really likes that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, they've all been very supportive. Supportive. Too much damn coffee. I can't even talk anymore. <laughs> That's okay. We we have issues with that too. <laughs> I like, yeah. Well, do you ever feel or worry that people take you more or less serious because you use your beauty and body sometimes within your career? I mean, because I know as a female, sometimes be doing what we do. You know, sometimes you don't get the best of uh, responses from other people because basically because you're a female and if you, you know, attractive, you know, they think, well, you know how they are. <laughs> yeah. I, I've got, I, I'm going to say that I have had to prove myself a lot of times because a lot of people think, you know, oh, she's blonde with big boobs. She must be dumb, you know, but that's not the case whatsoever you know I I and when people talk to me and I and they may see that like in some of the photos and just judging me by that and thinking that but until they've actually met me and are are able to have a conversation with me you know I will change their mind in less than two seconds I am not a dumb blonde with big boobs <laughs> so. But, you know, there's always, you know, I'm sure there's always some female cattiness, which goes along with, you know, oh, look what she did, you know. And personally, I haven't had to deal with that, and I'm thankful for that. Um, A lot of, you know, I think females should, you know, should support each other if that's what they want to do and they're good with it, then there you go, you know. I mean, there's no sense in being jealous or all that, and I know some females can be that way, but. You know, I'm just looking at it like, way to go, you know, if I see another actress or model that's done this or that, you know, I'm copping my hands for them, you know, I'm like, that's awesome. You yeah, know, I, keep... I, agree. I think women really do need to support each other. I mean, I, yeah. I agree 100%. I think it's perfectly fine for a woman to look at another woman and say, wow, you know, you're doing a great job or you're beautiful or you're this. I think 
if more women would complement each other and help each other rather than try to tear each other apart, we go so much further without people saying, oh, my God, well, here comes all the bitches. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's true. It, it really is true. And, it, you know, it cuts out so much drama. You know, who needs drama? You know, I mean, just everybody just get along and be supportive of one another and what they're doing, their endeavors, and just, you know, give them a pat on the back, you know, I mean, because there's no sense in wasting your time being jealous. You know, I mean, you know, because each, each person is going to have their own thing, you know, and just everybody be supportive of it. Even guys, you know, like I said, there's a lot of guys that I've had to, you know, do a 360 on and turn them around and let them know straight up, hey, I am not that dumb blonde, you know, because some guys still have that <laughs> mentality, you know. Yep. So, Rodney, no, I'm just kidding. Hey. <laughs> hey. No, wait a minute. Think I think, that. They think you can all be pretty and smart. Exactly. No. Yeah, Rodney don't think Rod. No, Rodney's likes intelligence too. Intelligence well, makes Rodney a woman is more. very crazy. supportive of his girls. Yeah. Yes, I am. Even though I might talk like I'm a, you know, a, 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 what do you call it, a selfish pig, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I really ain't. It's just all well, I ask. Rodney even lets me talk about my menses. <laughs> oh, as Lord. Is, as much as I don't like to hear it, I will sit and listen and nod. <laughs> right? There you go. Hey, we got a caller here. I want, I want to put them all over and see if they got a question for you, Shannon. Are you cool with that? Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Okay, uh, I got you on. You got a question for Shannon? Yeah, my name's Erie. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. You? I'm pretty good. Robin, how are you doing? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm sorry to hear about that toenail. <laughs> hey, Shannon Stockton. Oh, God. <laughs> My name is Erie, and I was wondering, uh, do you have any other projects coming up? I've been a fan way back since Peyton's Burden. Projects coming up? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. <laughs> now, Make it happen, uh, Gavin. <laughs> Actually, yeah, the next movie, the next film that I'm filming um, with uh, Jim O'Rear and Scott Tuckerman for uh, Lois Foster's uh, production. It's called Nightblade, and this is um, going to be filming in Nashville. And uh, we, yeah, this is my next role. It's going to be quite the fun thing to do. I am going to be playing a stripper, um, not a fully nude stripper, but um, <laughs> but I uh, am going to have an iconic kill scene. And usually, I'm the one doing the killing, so it's going to be a be awesome to be the one killed this time. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> so, um, Everybody yes. wants to die in the film. Everybody yeah. wants I want to die in the film. Mm-hmm. Kill me. Right? So that should be fun. You know, and then a lot of conventions and stuff coming up too. So <laughs> but so far that's about that's it up until September anyway. I don't know what's gonna happen after that, but we'll see. Well, I, I want to change the direction a little bit here. Uh, you know that uh, I have a group called Black Diamond Paranormal Society, and we've been uh, searching, doing investigations uh, going on eight years. Right. Uh, have you had any paranormal uh, experiences that you'd like to talk about? Any good story or something that happened to you you can't explain? I do, actually. I have a couple <laughs> so, uh, girl, just uh, pour you a drink and get up the bar and let's let's hear it. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I've had a couple incidents. It, it, blah, more coffee. Um, incidences where um, I have seen some things that are unexplainable to me. I've heard some things. I uh, after my daughter was born, um, she. I don't know, I guess she was about three months old, maybe. And, uh, you know, I'm just sitting there, and I'm holding her, feeding her. It's daytime. And uh, I look over, something catches my eye. I look over, and there's this, as bright as could be, I guess an orb, maybe, um, probably the size of a quarter. 
Um, and it's almost like I startled it by looking at it, and it kind of scurried. And it went into my closet, and this was daytime, and then my closet was right there, and it's dark in the closet. And it never changes light. I mean, it's the same brilliance as it was when I saw it. And it kind of, it's like I scared it. It was weird. It kind of scurried into my closet and then just kind of, you know, disappeared. I was like, hmm, that was weird. <laughs> you know? Um, and that was that one thing. And then uh, I used to live in a cabin that was built in 1916. And uh, when I say cabin, it was it had been an old hunting lodge. And uh, you could hear, when my daughter would come stay with me, she refused to sleep in her room. She would not sleep in her room for anything. And, you know, she would tell me, and she was probably about four or five years old, and she would tell me, you know, she, there's ghosts in there. And I'm like, yeah, yeah whatever, you know. Um, and, and I'm open-minded, but, you know, at the same time, I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. Um, but they weren't there. It was just me and my dog. He was downstairs with me. And the the way the cabin was, her room was right over the living room. And you can hear, and I recorded it, so I have a, a recording of this. But this happened for a week straight, every night at 7 o'clock on the dot for an hour each night. But you could hear rolling, because remind you, this is the old cabin, so the floors are all real wood, so you can hear everything. Um, but you could hear, it sounded like a ball, like, Two children, like a ball rolling, like playing, rolling the ball back and forth to each other. Mm -hmm. And the whole time, my dog, because, you know, they're very sensitive to things like that. My dog would look up at the ceiling and would just not growl, but, like, he had, like he was aware that something was going on, you know. And uh, when I recorded it, you know, people are like, oh, it's a raccoon. or whatever. I'm sorry, but raccoons don't come and play at the same time every night and roll balls across the floor, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> right. So after that, I was, when I moved a couple, I don't know, maybe a year or so later, and I had caught different, you know, pictures and video of more orbs and things in the house. Um, I heard um, a, a little child's voice. I don't know. It was a girl. I could tell. Um, and I used to have a couple of cats, too. Um, but this was after the the ball rolling. So the cats came after. So I know it wasn't the cats playing ball upstairs. But um, they, you could hear in my ear, like I was laying in bed one night, and I could hear in my ear this little girl saying, here, kitty, kitty. And I'm like, my kids weren't there. You know, I know my animals don't talk. You know, I'm like, what the hell is this here? In the same instance later, um, when I was starting to move out, I was downstairs. There's nothing in the house. You know, I'm getting the last few things. Um, and I'm cleaning up a couple of things here and there. And right in my ear again, I hear a child's voice saying, hey. You know, and I went upstairs just, you know, I didn't acknowledge it or anything. I heard it, but I didn't acknowledge it. And I went upstairs and in my daughter's room, and I started recording. And literally, like, and I had a couple of friends after I recorded this just so I could, like, prove it, you know, basically. But to step, like, one foot in my daughter's room, one foot in my son's room, which was had an adjoining door, and there was almost a 20 degree temperature change just one hand in in one room one hand in the other just like standing across the threshold and uh I did some recording and you have and you can see it almost looks like an orb I mean it's huge I mean I don't know maybe the size of a mouse or something but I've got this on video and you can see these orbs like scurrying across the floor and this is daytime. A lot of people I know they do their film, you know, their paranormal investigations at night. But this is straight up daytime. And I, you know, I've got all this on camera where you can see these little orbs just scurrying around and doing their thing, you know, and um, the temperature change in there. And then my daughter always saying that she, you know, she wouldn't sleep in there because she, you know, felt like something was there. Um, but yeah, that 
happen quite a few times, and I, you know, I'm not even going to go into the topic of seeing a UFO because that's happened to me too. And I know I'm not crazy. I know what I saw, you know. <laughs> but it's hard to, you know, it's hard to get when you tell your story. Some people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many non-believers, but at the same time, I'm, you know, I'm not crazy. I know what I saw. You know, so it's one of those things. I don't really talk about the UFO thing too much because, you know, but, um, yeah. Please, please do. If you got a UFO yeah. story, big story, something like that, hell yeah, I want to hear it if you don't mind. <laughs> no, I I don't mind. It was, it, and this was the only time that I've ever seen that, seen this, actually, because um, I'm more prone to seeing, like, the orbs and hearing the voices and things. But the UFO thing was really something that kind of freaked me out, to be honest with you. It really did. Um, I used to work at public supermarket, and I worked at night. And I went the same way home every night, you know, so I would have known. I would have seen this any other time. Um, but I was on the way home. I think it was about 1030 or so. And I'm going down this, this road that I always travel on. And I see almost like um, lights like you see on a football field, like the bright, you know, halogen lights or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I look up and I see this, and I'm like, what the hell is that? You know, because I, I'm dri- I drive this way all the time. I've never seen that before. And I'm driving. I roll my window down. There's nobody, you know, in this town, there's like no, I mean, it's pretty much dead at 10 o'clock. There's no cars around. All the businesses are closed, um, and there's no buildings whatsoever. There's no trees. It's just clear sky right through there. And so I'm driving. I roll my window down, and I'm still trying to figure out what the hell this is. And it was so far in the distance, and I probably only drove, like, I don't even know, maybe, like, three feet. Maybe it wasn't far at all. And it was like all of a sudden, four of those lights were right over top of me. I mean, like that quick, because it was so far away when I saw it. But within about three feet, they were right up, you know, right on top of me. And so I stopped the car, literally. Like, you know, there's nobody else around. So I stopped the car and I get out. And of course, my phone, I'm trying to take fucking pictures and my phone is like not working (laughs) and I'm sitting here that you can't hear a thing and this thing as big as it was and as bright as it was I'm sorry but you would have heard something and it was you could have heard a fucking pin drop and I'm standing outside my car this thing is over me it's almost like triangular in shape with the halogen light and I'm trying to, you know, take pictures and I can't, my phone is not working and I'm sit, I'm looking, I'm outside my car and I'm looking up and within like maybe a, less than a minute, it darts over to an open sky. There, right, Like I said, there's nothing around. All the lights, businesses are closed. There's no lights or anything on businesses or whatever. And all of a sudden, it you know it darts over to the middle of the sky and the motherfucker just disappears right in front of my eyes lights are gone i mean it was like if you were at a you know at a football game and somebody just turned all the halogen lights off and they all disappeared it happened like right there in front of my you know in front of my eyes and i'm standing outside my car going holy shit I I mean I wasn't scared per se, but I was kind of like, what the fuck? Am I about to get like abducted or what? You know, like what the hell? And I don't want to get probed. I don't want to get (laughs) probed. Yeah, it was just the craziest thing. And I called, you know, I had to tell somebody. Like, I was freaking out. I called my mom because my mom is a real. She is so much into the paranormal and aliens and UFOs and stuff. She's the only person I felt like I could actually tell what I just saw. And uh, I called her and I told her and she's just like, oh, my God. She said, that sounds just like something that your uncle saw when he was younger. And I said, what? And Because she had never told me about that. And she kind of described the same thing. 
um, the same light formation and things like that that my uncle had seen when he was like 10 or 12 years old and had never really talked about it other than with them. And at that time, I guess they were kind of like, eh, whatever, you know. And I was just like, oh, my God, that is insane. But a lot of I have encountered some people that, you know, they may get on the topic and I try to tell my story and they're like, ah, oh, whatever, you know, it's just da 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 No, I know what I saw, you know. So. Yeah. And I might have been one of those people a few years ago, but until yeah. I was living down in Virginia mm-hmm. and me and my son were outside and this was in the middle of the day and I mean, <laughs> I lived right beside a cow field, but we were just outside messing around and I looked up and I was like, what the hell? And it was, mm-hmm. but it was odd as shape, something. I don't know what it was. But right. It was an airplane and it was, it was just hovering a little bit. Yep. And then right there, and that's the only time I've ever seen anything, but I really believe I saw a UFO. Oh, yeah. I honestly believe, I mean, because it's right over top of my head, but the lights were so bright. It's like, you know, what the hell? And my phone wasn't working. There was no sound whatsoever. No other car. It was just me. No other cars, no other lights, no nothing. And I'm just kind of like, good God, really? Like, that's cool. But at the same time, holy shit. (laughs) You know? (laughs) But would you be interested in going on an investigation with us sometime as a special guest? Oh, hell yeah. Well, Definitely. I mean, would you be, willing, you be willing to drive up here to Virginia? I can do that. Okay. Yep. Well, I know we got a case that uh, we'll probably be working in the first weekend of November, and it's down close to uh, Bristol, Tennessee. Okay. Um, and actually, actually, we got one coming up in Bristol, Tennessee. What next month? July. Yeah, I, I, no, in July. Yeah, July. If you want to come up to it, uh, either one of those, uh, we'll work it out and get you up there and show you what we do. That'll be Have awesome. And we are actually getting ready to do our first, uh, we're getting ready to have a camp out where we're actually going to look for UFOs and Bigfoot. Oh, cool. Yeah. We're going to camp out on top of my property and uh, and spend the whole weekend up there. That sounds awesome. So uh, we're going to try to see if we can catch, you know, catch something, kick back, relax, bullshit, and have a good time. Do you want to? Come to that. We might, you know, if you're interested and, you know, we might, you know, come on up and camp out for a weekend if you want to. Yeah, just let me know and I'll see what um, the filming schedule is and all that good stuff. And we'll, I'm sure we can work something out. Yeah, I'd love to. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Okay. Oh, oh you're yeah. welcome. Anybody that's interested and wants to tag along with us, you know, uh, uh, we're, we always have a a spot for a special guest or two on investigations because we've had a few people and uh, uh, normally after we have an investigation, they sit there and they're like, God, I didn't realize realize there's so much fucking work. Right. (laughs) It is. Yeah. It is a lot of work. It's way more work than what people think. So, would you be willing to send us uh, maybe a few autograph photos to put on our wall and celebrities at our new office that we're working on? Yeah, I can do that, definitely. That'd be awesome. Oh. You can make sure that Rod gets the really hot and sexy ones. And I'll leave this. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. he stays in his office. <laughs> That's for my private collection. <laughs> oh, okay. I knew you were going to throw that in there somehow. I knew you couldn't be you without having a private photo collection, Rodney. <laughs> I'm sure he has a lot of private collections we don't know about. I bet. I, I, I will never tell. <laughs> when I'm dead, you know, somebody find, you know, somebody finds something, they'll be like, oh, my God, I can't believe he did that. I'll be like, yes, yes, you can. You can believe it. Just open up your mind and believe. <laughs> we still got a few more minutes. I gotta uh let me see. I, I was sitting here trying to 
think of another question because you you answered quick. Most people talk and talk and talk, and we have a good time, and we just jumped all over the place. Yeah. But uh, seeing how that you're getting more uh, out there, more recognized, do you have a hard time trying to have a private life? I mean, you know, do people come up to you and on the street and be like, hey, can I get your autograph? Hey, will you sign my packer? Or hey, will you sign my boob or something like that? <laughs> no, not quite yet. I'm like I said, I'm still kind of at the bottom of the totem pole. I think if I were in a more um, bustling uh, city, it might happen. But where I'm at here, outside of Nashville, I'm about 30 minutes from downtown Nashville, and it's so just you know country out here. It's beautiful, but at the same time, you know. A lot of people that I do work with during my day job um, are amazed at the things that I do, you know, and they're like, why are you here? Well, you know, I gotta, I'm got one of those creative persons. i got to have something to do with my time all the time. Um, and plus a little bit of extra money always helps. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but I, no, I haven't, I haven't gotten to that status, I guess, yet, you know, so no. Darn. <laughs> I ain't never had nobody ask me to sign or peck or shit. What? Me either, actually. I haven't had that one. Yeah, no. Well, I've had I've had the boob ask. I've been asked to sign them. But can you believe that? Me? What was it like when you have you when you that first person asked you for the autograph? How did that make you feel? Um. It's kind of cool, actually. Like, I I see all these other people, you know, signing and stuff, and I'm just like, wow, I get to do that too. Like, somebody – see, I'm so humble, and so a lot of times when, when people do that, I'm just like, wow, that's so awesome. Thanks, you know. I'm not like, oh, I don't expect, I don't expect it whatsoever. I really don't. And I, you know, and I think I'll always be that grounded type person, you know, and I would always – I would be the type of person that if I was at that status and I did conventions or whatever, I would sign shit for free just because I'm so thankful, you know, because if it wasn't for fans, uh, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing, you know. Um, We'd like to bring income from (laughs) both Well, see, that's how I am. I, I know when uh, I was asked the first time to sign an autograph, I thought the people were bullshitting me. I'm like, are you serious? Right. And like, yeah. I'm like, wow, yeah, okay. And then that's what really got me, the, 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 yeah, the second time was a little girl. We'd done a little convention at uh, a library in Buchanan County. And this mm-hmm. little seven or eight-year-old girl came up to me, and she's like, can I have your autograph? I thought I was going to cry. I'm like, yes, you can. And I, yeah. I started saying it, and she she whispered in my ear, and she's like, you're my favorite. I'm like, oh, oh I love this kid. Can I adopt her? <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm doing actually that um, Paracon in September, and it's the first one that I'm actually a guest at for uh, Leah Smock movie. And so I'm excited about that where I can, you know, sign some DVD copies and that should be really fun. I mean, I'm I'm looking so forward to that. that. Do what? Is that the one in Meade County? That's, yep, it's that one. Yep. Oh, we're going to be there. They uh, contact me today and want us to do a live show there. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to be there. We're a uh, special guest. Um, out there, so I'll be out there signing, and we'll have DVD copies of the movie and everything, so yeah, it should be fun. Well, cool. Well, we're about down to two minutes, so uh, do you have a website or any information on how people can get in contact with you? Um, I do have a Facebook fan page. I'm not a Twitterer, so I don't do Twitter, sorry, but uh, if you have Michelle Macabre on Facebook or Shannon Stock on Facebook, anybody can message me or you know, that good stuff, and I'm usually good about returning messages, so um, if I, as long as I have a minute, I'll try to get back to anybody that messages. <laughs> you know, some days is harder than others, but I try. Well, 
Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. It's been a blast. And anytime you want to come back, just let me know, or I'll let you know. I'm like, hey, I need you to come on. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I'd be glad to. Thank you all for having me. Oh, you're well, welcome. If we don't see you before, I guess we will see you in September. Yep. Well, hopefully we'll see each other before then. So, fingers okay. crossed. I'll, I'll send you all the dates and everything and uh, see what you can work out. There you go. Don't forget to send my T-shirt, too, mister. Oh, I, I tried. I got to mail that tomorrow. Thank you for reminding me. Back here in my chair. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's only been like two months, Rodney. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one to give you. <laughs> well, there again, I do appreciate you coming on. We got like 40 seconds, so I better jump up here and say this. Uh, uh, there again, thank you for coming on the show, and that's it for us tonight. I want to thank you, Shane, for coming on the show, and thank everyone who took the time to listen and take part of our show. I'd like to give a big shout out to the Vibe Radio Network, also to all the first responders and our men and women in armed services. Thank you all for your service. Our guest for next Thursday night, May 26th, will be the mayor of Pocahontas, Virginia, Mayor Ben Gibson. So stay tuned to next week to another exciting show starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until